So one kind of reaction are called single replacement reactions. They're similar to double replacement, but instead you have a metal, okay, that reacts with some sort of ionic compound to produce a new metal and a new ionic compound. What happened is a metal comes in and kicks out the other metal. It replaces it, so A replaces B, okay? Or I can take a halogen, like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, right, these guys, and it's going to come in and replace the other halogen and kick that out. So single replacement, a single thing kicks out another thing. Metals always replace metals, halogens always replace halogens. So let's look at examples of halogens first. So let's say I have fluorine plus sodium chloride. The fluorine is going to come and kick out the chlorine. Okay, so it makes Cl, but remember all halogens are diatomic. And then it's going to make another product with Na and F. Okay, I can't just say, oh, it makes NaF2. Remember, you always have to look at charges. Na is plus and F is minus, so they make NaF. All right, and then we just go ahead and balance with a couple of twos. So that's one example. So, unfortunately, there's a trick to this. You can't just throw any halogen in and have it work. Okay, there's something called the activity series. It tells us which reactions will work and which will not. Which metals will replace which metals and which halogens will replace which halogens. So, a halogen will replace any halogen below it. Okay, so fluorine can come in and kick out chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Chlorine can come in and kick out bromine and iodine. Iodine can't kick out anybody. So if I add iodine to kind of anything, okay, I get no reaction. So the activity series tells us which reactions will work and which will not. The same with the metals. Metals will replace any metals below it. So lithium can react with pretty much anything. Gold can't react with anything. Okay? And then there's some rules with acids and water, which we'll do some examples of in a minute. Let's look at chlorine plus Ki. First, will chlorine kick out iodine? Yes, it will. So we'll go ahead and write the reaction. Okay, chlorine's going to come in and kick out the I. So it makes I, and remember it's always diatomic, plus a compound with K and Cl. K is plus, Cl is minus, so KCl. Okay, again, we'll balance it with a couple twos, and we're all done. So halogens, they're pretty simple. There's very little that can happen there. So how about metals? Okay, I got a metal here, so it's going to come in and kick out the other metal. Okay, copper will kick out silver. Well, let's make sure it really will. Let's find copper. Here's copper. It's pretty far down on the list, so it can only replace things below it. Oh, but silver is below it. So this reaction will work, okay? So it comes in, it kicks out the silver, and it's going to make a compound with copper, okay? Copper is a transition metal, so I'll have to show you how to figure out what ion it will form, but I'm going to tell you it's 2 plus, and with nitrate. We can look at it. i show you how to figure that from a periodic table. So the other product here is copper 2 nitrate. Okay. And, of course, we should balance it with a couple of twos. So I have a picture of it here for you, okay? Uh, I'm going to make it a little bigger, because what's kind of cool about this is you take copper metal, right? The copper is a solid. You can see the copper metal here, right? This is your piece of copper metal. It's kind of swirling here. And you put it into a solution of, that's your copper to nitrate. Okay, so it's aqueous, it's dissolved in water. And what happens as it reacts, it makes silver, makes a solid silver, and can you see it? It's that fuzzy stuff that's forming on the copper. So the copper solid 
becomes an ion in solution, and the silver ion becomes a solid. Okay? And this is going to be something called a redox reaction that we're going to learn about later, too. But this is what a single replacement reaction looks like. So, aluminum wants to kick out copper. Before we do any work, let's see if it will. Here's aluminum, and it will kick out anything below it, so this should work. Okay? So, we kick out copper, and we make product with aluminum and nitrate. Aluminum's 3 plus, so it's going to make AlNO3 3. Okay, and then the trick is just going to be to balance it. Okay, we're going to need a 2 and a 3 and a 3 and a 2. Okay, okay. Now, metals can also kick out hydrogen. You'll notice hydrogen is on this list. Okay, so there's some rules here, they're listed at the bottom. Metals from lithium to sodium will replace hydrogen from an acid and water. So these guys right here will kick hydrogen out of anything, acids or water. All right. These metals right here will only replace hydrogen from acids. If you throw them in water, nothing happens. So let's find zinc. All right. Where's zinc? Oh, here's zinc. Can it replace hydrogen from an acid? Well, yes. So this is going to happen. So it's going to kick out hydrogen, but remember hydrogen's diatomic, so it makes some hydrogen gas. And then it's going to make a product with zinc and chloride. Right? Chloride's minus one, zinc is two plus, so it's going to make some zinc chloride. And then you balance it. And again, there's a picture here for you, and you can see, whoa, that's not what I meant to do. There's a picture here. All right, I'll stop playing with my video. You guys can laugh at me about this tomorrow. If you look here, there is zinc here. And can you see all the bubbles forming? Okay, that's your hydrogen gas. Those are your bubbles, all right? So, not very coordinated, but there you go. Okay, I can also replace hydrogen from water, okay? Only these metals can replace hydrogen from water. Now you're going to be given this activity series on a test. You do not have to memorize it. You're even going to be given the part at the bottom that tells you, you know, this part here, okay? So you don't have to memorize any of this. This whole thing will be given to you, all right? So will sodium replace hydrogen from water? Yes, it will. So this is going to happen. Now the trick to this and this is the one that most people, if they get one of these wrong, this is the one they get wrong, okay? Because what they want to do is they want to kick out the hydrogen, okay? So they kick out the hydrogen, and then they say they make sodium oxide, okay? Because they get the o, the o left. Unfortunately, this is just wrong, okay? What you have to do is you have to think of water as H and OH, okay? So I'm going to write that down below. Because what the sodium does is it comes in and kicks out the hydrogen to make H2. But then there's an OH left. So we get a compound, Na plus, and OH minus. So we get NaOH. Okay, so the most common mistake is to accidentally write that. But this is the product. All right. And then we have to balance this. Oops, that doesn't go there, just kidding. It goes there. Okay, so those are single replacement reactions, and those are going to take a little bit of practice.